Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. In this tutorial I'm going to explain the relationship between superclass and subclass. Let's go ahead and open up my website here to javacjava.com. Click on the menu, pop out, and select Java OOP Tutorials. This is where I have all my object-oriented programming related tutorials here. I also have a whole bunch more tutorials on the main page. Let's scroll down here to superclass and subclass. I will begin this tutorial with the definition of the word derive. So you're going to hear that quite often. And that means basically to receive or obtain from a source or origin. In order to understand inheritance, you will need to understand the relationship between a superclass and a subclass. A subclass is derived from a superclass. The class subclass name is located to the left of the extends keyword. The subclass inherits the members of a superclass. The superclass name is located to the right of the extends keyword and it is the class that will allow access to its members. The superclass does not inherit the members of a subclass. So, one way relationship there. In Java, a class can only have one direct superclass. If a class declaration does not contain the extends keyword, Java implicitly extends the object class. Now don't worry about object yet there. I'm going to get into that in future tutorials, but just know that it's important. When it comes to inheritance, the object class is the granddaddy of them all. The object class is at the top of the Java food chain. It has no superclass. A class can extend a class that extends another class that extends another class. Eventually a class will implicitly extend the object class. So what we have here is we've got this class nation and it doesn't have like any sort of extends like these other classes do down here. Now what happens is object is implicitly the superclass of nation and nation is essentially a subclass of object, right? Because we could actually, you know, put in extends nation here. Now in my class nation, I have one string here, nation name and it's an, um, an instance variable here, okay? So fairly, really, really simple. I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible here. Now, we ha now I have class state here, right? And it has one instance variable too as well, a string value of state name. And I've got extends nation up here, right? So what that, what that does is that says basically, okay, state, um, will be a subclass of nation. Nation will be a superclass of state, right? And state will inherit all of nation's members, right? So here is a member. It'll go ahead and inherit that just as if it was sitting in its own class. All right, so now I've got another class county and it extends state, okay? So now state is the superclass of county and county is the subclass of state. County has one instance variable county name, right, string type. It will inherit all of state's members, plus in state extended uh, nation, it will also inherit all of that, right? So you can see this is chained down. So state will have um, inherited state name and nation name as well. And it has county name as one of its instance variables, okay? Now down here, at the very bottom, you've got this class city, and it just has a simple ins um, instance variable here, city name, and it is a subclass of county. County is a superclass of city. So you can kind of see how this kind of chains together now and everything like that. Now because city extends county, and county extends state, and state extends nation, right? City, the city class has access to all of these members. You can <clears throat> directly refer to them. So let's go ahead and come down here and do some code and, and get you familiar with this sort of stuff. Highlight everything, control C to copy or right click and select copy. Go ahead and move the browser off screen here. 
I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one real quick by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, type in CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. I'm going to go ahead and open up the command prompt here, type in Java C. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial um, on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly prior to continuing with the tutorial. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory, MD Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder, and I'm going to make a directory called uh, SuperSub. And we'll change to SuperSub, and I'm going to notepad supersub.java. Supersub.java is going to be the source code file name, otherwise known as the compilation unit. And let's go ahead and just do a little resizing on that. Okay. We'll control V to paste or right click and select paste. It's up to you. And inside of the supersub source code file, there's a total of five classes. Each one of these classes could be in its own separate source code file, but I just go, went ahead and put them in here because it's just easier for the tutorial to explain how this works. Um, so we've got the exact same thing as above up there, only I've actually put in extends object. Okay, And as you notice, we don't actually have any object class encoded in here, right? Uh, but it's the granddaddy of them all. It'll be implicitly put in if we don't. And every class we've created up to this point, it actually is being implicitly put in there. Um, okay, so let's make sure this is saved out here. So in the super subclass, I've got my main method entry point right here. Right. The first thing I'm going to do is create a city object type a um, variable name, a reference variable called OCity, and then it will uh, will assign it to an object reference of the city class, right? So because we we have this object of city data type, right, and it extends all this stuff, we'll have access to all these things. So we can, you know, use the dot operator to directly access all of these uh, instance variables here. Right, so we can set the city name to Orlando, the county name Orange County, state name Florida, the nation name USA, right? And we'll just print out I live in plus we'll directly access the instance variables again using the dot operator. And it'll print out this, this um, it'll execute this statement here and display that to the console there. And then now I've created a Another reference variable called O county of county type, right? So county down here, because it extends state and state extends nation, and um, we have access to all three of these variables. So I can go ahead and say, okay, um, O county, the reference variable dot operator to directly access the county name variable here equals Norfolk, Norfolk County, and uh, then I can say. Well, basically England doesn't have states, so even though we inherited state name, we don't have to use it or do anything with it, and I'm not going to in this example here. So we can take the O county, the object reference there, and access the dot nation name and set it to England. Now, um, one of the things you, you have to remember is that city extends county, so county is the superclass of city, city is the subclass of county. Now, county does not have access to city's members. It only works one way, and that's up the food chain. Can't come back down here and say county.city name, right? So if we tried to do o county dot city name equals Hemsby, we get an error because county is a superclass of city. Superclasses do not have access to subclass members, and we'll comment that out and run that there. Um, so then we'll print out uh, basically Norfolk County, England is a wonderful place to visit. Let's go ahead and make sure we got this saved. Let's clear our screen. Let's compile it. Do a directory here, right? Um, as you can see, we've got our source code file name, and then all five of those classes there each have their own bytecode in the dot class extension. So let's, I'm just going to clear that screen again, and then I'll do Java. Super sub. 
Okay, so I live in Orlando, Orange County, Florida, USA. Norfolk County, England is a wonderful place to visit. All right, so that's basically how that works. One of the things I want to show you here is, you know, I actually put the extends object in there. So let's go ahead and take that out. We'll save this. Oh, did I just do a save as? Just save that and uh, we'll recompile this. Java C, I'm just going to hit F8. And Java. F8. Okay, I live in, we got the same exact thing. So as you can see, whether we put it in there or not, um, it will go ahead and basically extend the, the object class, the object class being the granddaddy of them all there. Okay, one other thing I wanna do here at this point is go ahead and uncomment this line to show you that a superclass does not have access to a subclass as members. So let's go ahead and save this. Clear our screen, we compile, and we get our error. So basically what we get is cannot find symbol on the city name, it's actually pointing to right here. And so basically this is a variable city name and it can't just, it just can't find it because it doesn't even know it exists, it doesn't have access to it. So we got exactly what we expected there. So you cannot go down the down the food chain you can go only go up the food chain all right uh, let's go ahead and save that i don't know what i'm clicking there okay we'll recompile that everything's happy and we can run it again all right so i'm going to go ahead and close out of that close out of this leave you with some final thoughts here um, you should now have a clear understanding of the relationship between a superclass and a subclass. And it's important to remember that the object class is at the top of the food chain and that it is implicitly extended when the extends keyword is not in the class declaration. Now, in future tutorials, the object class will be the key to understanding some more advanced concepts. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.